Hi, I'm Rebecca M. Zorno, a science fiction author and speculative fiction book coach, and today we're going to be talking about writing retreats. However, I want to let you know this is going to be the last video in the Rebecca in Publishing series on the Conqueror Books YouTube channel. We've done almost a full cycle of what it takes to get a book out there, and so I hope that if this is the first video you're watching, you can go back and get some tips and a sense of the rhythm of what being an indie author is like. Uh, we will also do more exciting series in the future on our YouTube channel, so stick and stay tuned for that. Um, but I think we've talked about a lot of indie author issues in this series, and it's just time to switch things up. But for now, let's talk about what I did this month to give you a sense of what does an indie author do in one month. So, as I'm sure you can tell from the writing topic, writing retreats, I went on a writing retreat this month. I had some big goals. I got my manuscript back from my book coach, Nicole, and I did a developmental edit, the fixes on my book, and then I moved into line editing on my own. I drafted two short stories, I set up a book signing while I was there, and then I sent, at the end of the writing retreat, I sent the manuscript back to my book coach, I sent it to my cover designer, and I gave a copy to my husband to read. I also booked my copy editor, and I set up two more book signings for the new f near future. Um, one of the venues wanted a press pack, which I did not have, so I made one. Um, and it looks pretty good. You know, I think sometimes we think that like, oh gosh, I don't have this. They're going to know right away that like I'm not a professional or I don't have the backing of a huge publishing house. But you know, when people want something, you just take the time to make it that day. And they don't know that it may, was maybe your first time putting a press back together. Um, next, well, there's a little bit of month left. I'm going to be reading through my book for line edits. Um, in anticipation of getting it back from my book coach and moving into to those edits before I go to copy editor. But that's really what I did this month. It was really writing focused at the beginning of the month when I was at the writing retreat. And then I had some odds and ends to take care of throughout the rest of the month and then focused on a lot of book coaching stuff and um, even getting maybe a little bit of rest after the writing retreat. So let's talk about writing retreat tips. I was very fortunate to attend a, re a week-long writing retreat in Door County at Right On Door County. Um, I won the HAL Prize in 2020 and part of the winning first place package was this week-long week writing retreat, but anybody can apply. Um, and a lot of writing retreats are like that. Anybody can apply or sometimes there's like a specific thing that, oh, if you enter this program or if you win, or if you want to pay. Um, but I'm also an advocate for at-home writing retreats, you know, blocking out an entire weekend to take care of some serious editing, or even just saying, hey, you know, every night this week, I'm just gonna block out my schedule. I'm not gonna do my hobby stuff. I'm not gonna do any of these things. Just two hours every night for five days, I'm gonna write my book and maybe you'll get, you know, 10, 15% of your book done. So I think there's a lot of ways to do writing retreats. Um, but it's important to clear your calendar and to the best of your ability, clear your inbox before your writing retreat. I tried very hard to get all of those little things taken care of before I went so I didn't have to interrupt my process to take care of things. Um, I also did a lot of goal setting before my writing retreat. I tried to be realistic about what I could actually do. I personally get very stressed and overwhelmed when I fall behind on my goals. And so I really try to take it seriously. Hey, is this feasible for me to edit this many chapters in a day? Or, hey, I know that I write this many words per hour. Why do I think suddenly I'm gonna, you know, be able to write this many words per hour just because I'm on a writing retreat? So thinking a lot about what you actually can get done in the time you have and then prioritizing the most important things. I did take a little bit of time to draft two short stories and it was a nice break from my other work, but you know, I did that later in the week once I knew that I was on track for everything else. While I think it's good to kind of clear your plate a bit in anticipation of a writing retreat, if you are traveling, I highly recommend looking for opportunities to connect 
Um, you know, perhaps there's a bookstore who would host you for a book signing. Perhaps there's a local publication that would be interested in interviewing you. There's a writing circle, you know, that you can uh, meet with while you're there. Doing something to ground yourself to the place that you're going to, but then also taking advantage of, um, hey, you might not always travel to this location. You know, why don't you combine things, take a break from writing and uh, push some of your career goals a bit further. Um, I had some really great success with that. Um, right on Door County um, usually has their uh, writers and residents teach um, a workshop for the community. And they said that I didn't have to because I won an award, but I said, of course I want to. And um, that was a great way to get to know some people in the community. And then because I was doing that, the Door County Pulse um, did a piece on me in anticipation of that event and it snowballed and I had um, a book signing at a local bookstore, which was a terrific experience. Um, one of the best indie bookstores I've ever been in. And so seeing how you can piece those things together to help support you as a well-rounded career author, um, I think is is a good thing to take advantage of when you go on a writing retreat. In theme with getting away from the desk a little bit, uh, make sure you do a lot of movement. Um, we can have really high goals for what we write, but um, you know, if you're typing, you gotta give your hand a break. If you're sitting at a desk in the same position, you gotta get up and do some yoga, go for a walk. You know, this is good just for your own health and wellness, but it's also really good for inspiration. Um, one thing that my financial coach has said to me that I really loved was that, um, you know, as a creator, you are not just working when you are actually making the thing. You need inspiration to do those things. And so by stepping away from the desk, going for a walk, going to a cafe, you know, all the things we do in our life feeds us as writers. And so we should take our breaks seriously because it's helping us create better things. I'm also really driven by <laughs> many rewards or any kind of tally system, you know, box checking. So I made sure to plug that into my daily schedule. Like, hey, if I edited this chapter, I take a break to go have breakfast and not type while I'm eating, but just, you know, look out the window, relax. Um, if I, you know, had something set up, I would try to alternate between writing and, you know, doing some of those like daily chores or getting ready or going for a walk. Um, whatever it is for you I've seen writers who they have a, a sketchbook and you know they draw so many images and then they get to color in an image when they finish a certain chapter or writers who have a jar of beautiful stones and for however many you know a thousand words they write they get to move a stone into another jar whatever works for you on a visual or a creative level to sense and celebrate the achievements that you're earning on your writing retreat, I think is a winning idea. Oh, this is a big one. It's all in your head. <laughs> and you know, the writing career really is all in your head, but especially when you are writing intensively at a retreat or even just doing some hard work at your own desk at your house. So much of this is in our head, not just what we're creating, but the effort and the work that it takes. And so make sure you're in a really good mental place. Make sure you respect your boundaries, you know, when you get tired, when you need to step away and take a break, when you need to push yourself. Um, be really mindful of you as a writer and what keeps you writing during a writing retreat and really rely on those strengths and um, be mindful of those weaknesses. If you're interested in um, learning more about my writing retreat, I did keep a daily log on my TikTok um, at Rebecca M. Zorno author, I think my handle might be. Uh, I'll post it. And so um, you can see what the whole experience was like at Right on Door County um, and then see like what I did each day. So this is sad because it's the last video in the Rebecca in Publishing series, um, but my goal really was to share with indie authors and inspi inspired, inspiring indie authors. Uh, yeah, this is very inspiring. Um, but 
people who are thinking about this route and wondering what does that actually look like in real time. I have um, quite a few videos up now. You can go through them month by month and see, okay, this month, all right, this is what you can get done this month. Okay, so you do this and then you book your copy editor and then you know you talk to this professional. Um, some of those tips, but then also I've shared about um, one larger theme each month. And I really hope it can be valuable to whoever is watching these. If you have questions, don't be afraid to comment or reach out to us at info at conquerbooks.com and we'll have more series in store for you soon. Thank you.